Welcome back and welcome aboard, sports fans. It is that time again. We've got PTL Top Cut action. We are very happy to be back at our home base of operations, Face to Face Games, which is sporting their brand new location down on Danforth Avenue. Uh, tonight we are your hosts. I'm Timbo Slice. And I'm Evan Cameron. Very happy to have Evan Cameron, the Mr. Smith of X Wing. It is inevitable. On our stream with us. Evan is uh, one of the top-ranked players in Canada. Also just an absolutely stand-up human being. A little bit lippy sometimes, but who, are, who isn't in our group of friends? <laughs> uh, we are very happy to bring you the epic battle of the errands. Evan, tell me you're as jazzed about this as I am. I cannot wait to see who comes out on top on this one. Two exciting lists, two great players. Yeah, it's so great to finally see these two play on stream. Uh, we've joked about this for several seasons that we've had them play other players we've definitely seen them play each other off camera uh it's usually a match that doesn't disappoint um we're going to get inside their heads in a few minutes when we get them over here for the interviews the difference in their play styles is actually pretty notable um i've always thought of uh the fact that you know it's it, both of them have great wheelhouse of skills when it comes to uh, multi-ship rebel and scum lists and both of them have a pretty even amount of skill when it comes to ace lists and here we're literally seeing the two of them get to go against each other like that as well yeah Aaron Dater is definitely a, a scary man with his uh, his small swarms so I'm, I'm excited to see how he does with the the x-wings whenever there's a stream game going on with one of our league members we always encourage them to show up a little early uh, get a little bit of practice match in the just the feeling of being behind the camera the, the adrenaline, lights, the, yeah. it can distract you. It can distract you from the game that you're trying to play, uh, distract you from giving your opponent your best effort. Um, so that's why we always tell our players, you know, if you can show up a little bit early, get the shake the cobwebs off from your day of work. Um, Aaron had the advantage of playing on the weekend at a team event as well. So but, you had the practice match. What are you thinking about Aaron's approach for this, or Aaron D's approach for this? Aaron D's? Yeah. we got to go by their last names. This is going to get worse. Um, you know what? Let's not speculate on their strategy let's actually just talk to them about it okay sounds good joining me on the mic now is our contestant our contender on the left ptl season 13 quarter finalist aaron dater how are you doing this evening oh not too bad congratulations on making the top cut of another season of ptl this has got to be what a half a dozen seasons for you now mate <laughs> for top cut yeah this is only my second season come on but you know i'm always like just a little bit out but you know i feel like uh, this is my season well, I mean, you and I have known each other for a couple of years now, and I yeah. gotta say that, especially in the last, I want to say at least twelve months, I've seen you do consecutively and consistently better at each of the organized events that we go out to, and you've been, you've just been happy as a clam since 2.0 started. I really feel like a lot of the 2.0 mechanics and list building archetypes are really resonate with your play style. Yeah, I think once I stopped be trying to become an ace player and I just went for beef as much beef as possible then um then it really suited me and and 2.0 is is prime for for that sort of play style talk to me about your your setup here tonight you had the rocks placed the way you wanted or is it is, is aaron stacked them on his side a little bit more than you liked um no uh like i my ideal is having at least a rock in each corner and to give myself a lot of lanes um so this isn't too bad because uh, at least i have two lanes to that I can either go through, make a hard right and, and go through one of those lanes with all of his ships coming down at the top there. Or if he turns his ships, then I can go through this other giant lane here. So um, I feel like it's pretty good um, considering I don't have to go straight because that, that rock in the middle is in my way. But he didn't set up across from me, so I don't have to worry about that. Aaron, welcome. Hey, man. Congratulations on making Top Cut again. Oh, thanks. One of the original founders. Yes. How many seasons now? Uh... 13. 13. I feel like you're in the cut a lot, too. Yeah. Well, I've won twice. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I guess I could win again. <laughs> How are you liking your odds coming to this game? Uh, I'm not at all. Um, this is obviously not the list matchup I expected. Um, I was looking for aces or, you know, some semi-aces uh, that I could uh, bully with Midnight. And here Midnight is fairly next to useless since uh, Midnight, you know, can lock one X-Wing and then get killed by the other three. Um, the Pro Torps are nice to have in this situation, but uh, I don't know if they'll make enough of a difference, honestly. Uh, it's not looking good for me. 
I expected Aaron to, to bring some, as I say, semi-aces lists, um, which I could prey on with this kind of thing. Uh, and he is not. He's brought this super efficiency list with Leia. And the Leia will be important, no doubt, uh, for trapping Kylo. Tell me about the uh, the matchup, because this is actually ironically very similar to the practice mat you just had. Well, I feel like um, like with this list, if if you don't point, like the whole point of this is to have every single arc on uh, on one of these high agility dodgy ships. And if you miss that arc, especially first round of engagement, then you're in trouble, especially if they get a ship off the board before you do. As I feel like as long as I he loses a ship before I lose a ship, I'm good. Um, as soon as we start trading one for one, then I'm in trouble because I have three ships left and he's got one super amazing high agility ship that he can arc dodge me all day. In a perfect world, what would your tiger priority be? If I can get all of my all of the shields off Kylo, uh, or or if I can kill Kylo like like I mentioned, then that that would be amazing because. The rest of the two, it's a TIE fighter and an FO. I, I can hunt those down. It's easy to tell where those are going to be. Um, Kylo is really the big issue with this list, especially if he ends up last. Uh, that being said, um, I'll kill whatever he feeds me first. So rocks down. Mm -hmm. What was, your, what was th your thought process? Which rocks did you put down? Are you happy with the setup? Um, more or less. It's about as good as I could hope for. He stuck two of the rocks at two and two. So the other four are playing a role, and I'm going to fly in such a way to make them play a role. Um, I'm probably going to have to trade out blackout. Hopefully, uh, sorry, not blackout. Backdraft, uh, in order to you know get his X wings into a position. I'm, I guess I have to do that. Um, but uh, we'll see which way he goes. Um, Aaron's got very good swarm piloting skills. Uh, he does a medium slow approach, from what I know. So um, I'm expecting to uh, have to jockey here for a few turns while uh, we pretend at positions. So, so your plan is stay in that corner a little bit, try and f force him to commit down one side? Yep. I'm going to mess around a bit. All right. Well, good luck. Thanks, man. All right, sports fans. We're back. We are cocked and locked and ready to rock here. Our players have had their chance to sit in the hot seat, told us we picked their brains a little bit about where rocks and ships have ended up. Um, we are excited to get this match underway. Uh, Evan, any predictions that you got here? I'm, I'm going to go with Papanowsen. Uh, you know, I, I like his list. He's good with these kind of ships. Um, you know, he's, he's going to take his time, try and try and figure out where the X-Wings go. And once they've committed, he'll he'll get someone behind them and he'll have to give someone up to, to do it. But I like his odds. I do like the odds of the FO Aces. Um, you know, FO Aces are always in a position where they can really outlast a lot of beefy uh, lists. as It's a lot like Aaron uh, Dater said in his interview. If Dater can get to the point where he's not trading a ship or two for each of the aces and he can still maintain a ship advantage and get into the late game against one of the three of them with still having you know two and maybe one damaged ship left for a total of three, um, I think his odds are a lot better. I mean, Zeb's ability, although fun, useless in this matchup. Uh, Leia, most definitely not useless in this matchup. Going to be really handy on those turns when you've got to do, you know, four Talons on a K-turn. Um, I feel like that's probably going to be Aaron Poppenhausen's um, priority. Did, did you guys cover that in his interview? Yeah, so, so I think absolutely it will be. I think he's going to have to chip damage in wherever he can. Right. Uh, and one of the, the defining factors of whether he wins or loses is going to be whether he can take ships off the board or if he just spreads a bunch of damage around and, and there's still five arcs he has to avoid late in the game. Yeah, Dater's got to do the hard part here, which is not slowly roll up, but he's got to provide himself enough options to shut down lanes and then ultimately pick a lane and commit. Yeah. Um, you know, when you've got that many arcs and you've got that many ships that move consecutively like this, um, it's tough to not overcommit like you don't want to some people think it's bad to just jam in there but like he's doing the banks here i don't really see what much of a problem of going uh four forward with the boosts and putting himself probably uh somewhere about here would have been um my choice just because then you would have had the arcs covering probably midnight who's trying to get up this way kylo would have mm -hmm. to take the long way around if he wanted yeah. to approach that flank. Yeah. 
he he's still got the time to do the uh, the turn in, but one more turn and he'll be pretty committed up the the left side of the board here. Yeah, the the one thing I'm not too crazy about from uh, the position that Dater's choosing here is that once he gets his formation probably about there, your options to turn in to the lanes at that point are really kind of restricted. And by that time, Midnight could have like three turned, three turned and been down here and then Kylo's behind you. I'm not crazy about that, but you know what? These guys made the cut. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll all be on the next turn. Does, does he commit over into that, that cluster of three rocks that you gestured to? Or does he, does he continue to keep his options open to go down this way? Now, as a courtesy to his opponent, Dater always uses uh, the PTL uh, flip tokens that were awarded at PTL Open. Sorry, no, PTL Season 11. Um, right now, you don't see them on the board because all of the S foils are open. So o he... open is no token. He closes Correct. them and puts the token. Yes, when he closes them, he puts the PTL token next to it. Um, so if we wouldn't mind getting that changed on the overlay, Victor, all the S foils are currently registering as closed, but they are in fact open. Thank you, kind sir. So you you had a practice game against. Uh... Aaron D with a, a similar list before this. Is this similar approach used against you, or? So our rocks were very, very different layout. Um, it's funny when we were done the game, he had uh, two full health X wings and a one health Zeb left. That was after 40 minutes, and I had a dead midnight, a one health quick draw, and a Kylo with no shields. So I felt pretty good going into that late game because my Kylo was in a position where I could run for a turn or two and then re-engage. Um, that is what that is the fate that I fear for Dater in this is that if you aren't committing to a target and not letting that target get away or committing to a target each turn consecutively that is the most advantageous one for you to put all of your guns into, I feel like his ship count could dwindle but I hope that I'm wrong, honestly. Yeah, looks right now like he's he's targeting backdraft as his, his one, which will be the easiest one to, for him to lock down, um, but also probably the, the least important to get out of the way early. It's kind of the, the two-edged sword of Fanatical that I've never been really crazy about. You know, it's a fantastic upgrade for the value, especially on some of these FO aces like Midnight or, or Backdraft. But when you think about it, it's like, what has to happen? That means... I have to shoot and either spend my tokens and waste my mods and have no defense. But regardless, I'm not going to have that fanatical until the next turn. So I have to survive this turn. And Aaron Dater's list is the kind of list where if you put your FO ace in a bad position, you are going to get 15 red dice chucked at you, and there is no guarantee that you're coming out alive. Yeah, yeah. fanatical becomes nicer on those low initiative ships who spend their focus on defense but still lose the shield. Then they get the mod later that same turn. Yeah, like yeah. Epsilon Aces or Muse or yeah. even Null, for example. But Null doesn't have a talent slot anymore. Yeah, so it looks like uh, Pappenhausen has, has bit a little on going up that top side of the board and maybe wasn't wasn't expecting Dater to, to go up the left side because uh, Kylo is not getting his flank position right now. I think Dater's going to turn. Nope. It's going up into that area. It's going long. It's going long. Okay, well, this is brilliant positioning here because I don't believe that um, backdraft is going to go fast here. I don't think that, that Poppenhausen dialed in a, a two or a three bank here from from backdraft, which means that we might be trading one or two shots at range three, but then both Kylo and backdraft are going to be in a sticky wicket next turn. Yeah, so I'd really like to see Poppenhausen do the, the Kylo of five straight. If he does, he'll get you know Kylo out on on one side and Midnight on the other, so that that'll be the the nice play for him. But that's not bad. If he rolls out, he's then got a good position to start getting that back turned. So I I assume he's in range there at least of the front X wing. I think he's probably in range of one, and I would be very surprised if he's in range of red three. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah so I like that roll. Gets him in good place to to get the rear gun turned for next turn. Yeah, one of the best things about FO Aces, and this is one of the, the things that, that Dater went through in this last game that he and I played, is that the FO Aces, it's a lot about knowing that your opponents really, really want to kill certain ones of your ships and using that hate <laughs> uh, 
to pull them in directions that they don't want to go. Kylo is just phenomenal at this. Even if you yeah. don't shoot with Kylo for half the game, it doesn't mean that he hasn't been tremendously useful. He's been able to draw your opponent into a position where his wing, his formation, literally has to spend two turns getting back into the fight. Um, it's like you said, if Kylo had not done the one-turn boost here and Kylo had gone five straight, then Dater would have had to pivot his whole formation to stay on target of Kylo. And even then, if Kylo had bugged out, then his whole formation is stuck in the corner there. Yeah, he definitely doesn't want to do that turn. Although I actually don't mind this too. He's got the, those two rocks uh, blocking the X-Wings. Uh, so, not a bad place for... Yeah, three. this one can't... Number two cannot one bank next turn. I think he'll hit the middle finger. And I think that's it. I'm pretty sure a one bank from everybody else. Yeah, they'll still have the rock interfering with their following moves, but... Right. Okay, so we're in the first engagement phase of the game. Doesn't look like we're getting any shots this turn. No, no shots this turn. Yeah, this next turn is going to be the key one. Who can get the, the arcs where they need them. So good amount of time for the opening maneuvers. We've, we're about 15 minutes into the game now by the time they shoot at each other next round. Um, we've had Aaron Poppenhausen net net not really proceed out of his corner more than anything. I think he's still trying to decide which vector um, Dater is going to commit to. Dater, on the opposite hand, has definitely covered a considerable amount of ground and managed to pivot his formation in a pretty advantageous situation. I mean, I, I love just a two-turn downboard from two here, a one bank from four, and then three banks from these guys and get them right in here to cover their arcs. Yeah, I think that's definitely the right call for this turn. Dater always joked with me upstairs when we were doing our practice match that uh, although it is a formation list and Rebel players are always usually kind of uh, categorized as people who fly in formation, his list has zero negative implications. It's like there's no bigs. Yep. There's no Gavin Darklighter. There's no, <laughs> there's no uh, range one restrictions. Nobody has uh, swarm tactics or anything like that. So he really has all the... Um, ability to break his ships up and, and, and fly them out of formation if he chooses. Honestly, it's just nice to see four X-Wings on the board. <laughs> so so what's your call for, for backdraft here? Does backdraft uh, turn in and, and hope that, you know, as we kind of predicted, the X-Wings turn to the right? Or does he turn away and hope to turn his back arc towards them? I mean, a two-turn downboard to backdraft ship left and then a barrel roll downboard, so something like that so he ends up about there um that gives him rear arc coverage of pretty much anywhere the x-wings are going isn't bad knowing aaron you could always do the safe move which is the one bank and then see where everybody's going and barrel oh, roll man. back to get behind the formation or here to fight i don't think that backdraft is the one that's the most in danger here honestly i think it's midnight if if dater does what you and i just suggested which was to split up his formation and get half of them through the rocks and half at midnight's going to be in big trouble i mean midnight is a, a really really great ship but she is not the omega leader of 1.0 no that's for sure omega leader in 1.0 you had double tokens every turn they never lost and you know it was just it was a different ship there's so much variance that she can't hide behind uh, in 2.0. Okay, so we are looking like we're done with the planning phase. We got the players just thinking cautiously about this approach. I think it's fair to say that this is going to be one of the, the, the pivotal turns of the match here. I think that if Dater gets impatient, he might bite hard in here and it could cost him. And conversely, if, if Poppenhausen's too cagey and not aggressive enough, the X-Wings could outflank him. Dater looks pretty solidly confident with his dials. And as we said earlier, I think Pappenhausen's still deciding what he's going to do with Midnight because a leisurely two bank here could be a big problem. Here we see. Free turn. That's close. The rock oh, looks clear. Everybody clinch. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, it's not on the that's, rock. That's a brave move right there. Oh, my blood pressure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That midnight is not going anywhere. No, although this is a big commitment on midnight. If uh, if Kylo and Backdraft both come in hard right, they're in good places. A Dater's going to have to choose if he wants an, uh, a, a token for number three on this turn or if he wants to reposition because three will definitely go over the middle finger next turn if he doesn't reposition here. And this is really interesting to see because, honestly, um, Evan, in our match upstairs earlier on the opening round of engagement when all of my ships were finally in range, he took a pot shot at, excuse me, at Kylo the, the turn before. But the first turn that he had all guns on my ships, he, he repositioned three of them. And was it the right call? And it wasn't because on his offensive dice, I think he... He had about five or six different focus results that he couldn't convert. Uh, and ultimately, my, my quick draw made it out with only losing one shield. So um, I got a hit crit. I got a crit into hull on one of his ships as a result. So I'm really hoping that um, Aaron's trying to decide which ships to do in what order here. I think he's going to try and move number four first. Going for the turn as well. It's only a two turn, though. Yeah, that is interesting. I guess he was he was scared that uh, number two wasn't going to have space for the three turns. So, I do like one thing about this. I mean, he's he's committing to midnight on this one, unless midnight turns away. But he's also really providing himself a fantastic um, vector pivot on the following turn, where he can really just rotate the formation up board again and get guns back on Kylo or backdraft. Unless, of course, backdraft did that. Uh, that pesky one bank behind that big rock there and barrel rolls up behind the formation, then it's going to be a problem. Okay, so yeah. four's taking a focus. Self-bumped okay. on number two. I, I do say I'm, I'm a little worried. If uh, if Aaron does, Aaron Papanazan does commit in with Midnight, he's actually not taking that many arcs. Sorry, say that again. If Midnight turns in? If midnight just does a hard right in. He's, he's only taking two, maybe three shots. Yeah, he'd take two yeah. shots and then an obstructed one from yeah. Zeb. This is nice though for Aaron, uh, for for Dater. No arcs for uh, for yep. backdraft if he. No, it's close. Backdraft getting himself into a lovely position for the following turn. Going to take a range three unmodded shot from number two probably. Kylo yep. coming into the fight, getting looks like one arc obstructed yep. from number three there. Might just be a good idea to barrel roll up board and stay put for for Kylo here. Or even if he boosts, boosts will also give him some, some clean outs. Staying where he is, he's a little bit tight next turn. Yeah, I mean, if he just if he, if he remains unstressed, he's less bet. He's just going to take a lock. Oh my, Aaron coming in for the fight. Number four still looks like he has arc where he is there. I want to say that four has Midnight's back left ship corner. That arc's going to be very close. Oh, oh, yep. oh, 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 that's the judge call. I, I think Aaron pa Pappenhausen's call on the table was he thinks it's in. So. Yeah, Aaron that's... seems to think it's in. Aaron seems to think it's out. Now, which one's which? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. In all the time of being on PTL, you always use the name Aaron. And I honestly think that when we're talking about Aaron on stream or we're talking about, you know, the the infamous dinosaur barbecue issue in Syracuse, or if we're talking about league boss Aaron, I honestly think that none of our fans know which one we're talking about. It's finally... <laughs> it's one fi person. This they're... is the proof that there are, in fact, two of them. <laughs> we can finally get the one true Aaron uh, crowned uh, PTL semifinalist here in this season 13 cut. Pappenhausen weighing his options here. Another example of how 2.0 uh, Omega Leader not as awesome as they used to be. Yeah, I think, you know, Papenhaus ended up deciding he's only really taking one or two modded shots. He's better just yeah. with the, the folks for himself. Yeah. Okay, so we're taking two shots at number one, then. We're going to take midnight shot first. Um, Aaron just deciding which one of his loaded dice to roll first. No, I'm just joking, folks. One crit evaded cleanly. Those There's... new black regionals dice proving about as stream-friendly <laughs> as a... EMP device. Proton torpedo coming from Kylo Ren on number one. I see two blanks. Oh, painfully, he's got two force, so... Yeah, he's deciding whether or not to roll the eyeball again. I think he's going to do it. Yeah, might as well. 
Okay, so two hits, one crit. Sorry, one hit, two crits, I should say. No crits through. That uh, data will be happy with disappointing. that. Disappointing. Two agility ships need to take crits like that. I'm surprised Aaron popped his proton torpedo at that point. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think he feels the need to get something off as quickly as possible. I understand that. Uh, and he's not in a great position next turn to not be blocked. Um, so we can't reliably get a lock the next turn. Okay, so we definitely have no arc from Backdraft on red 3. We're going to see if Backdraft has range on red 2. That's a hard no. Now comes Dater's turn. Four is going to shoot first. I don't even know why we thought that was so close. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that was close not close at all. There's the, the camera. camera, the camera <laughs> view, exactly. Oh. That's rough. Still range three, three yeah. unobstructed. All right, we got this one. Number, this is Zeb shooting. Uh. There we go. Yeah, double crit. Okay, so Midnight has survived two out of the four shots, and now two more modded shots coming at him. We got number one and number three. I think three is actually unmodded. Three is the one who barrel rolled. You're so. right. He yeah. is the one that modded. Yeah. Okay, so we got the range two shot coming here from one on Midnight. We're gonna see if Midnight's gonna lose his shields this turn. Ooh, two. Probably just going to lose a shield here. No. Nice. Cleanly evaded by Midnight. We got one more chance for Dater to put some damage through this turn. Dater might have a range two unobstructed shot on Kylo. I would take I, that shot. I no, I'd, I'd go on the damage midnight, or not damage, but the tokenless. The midnight. tokenless midnight. Yeah. Yeah, you're not gonna get too many shots on a tokenless midnight, are you? See, folks, this is why we invited Evan Cameron on the stream, because he's so much of a better player than me. It's so true. He has oh. to get on and tell us what the, to do in situations. So you are listening to this stream later and going, Tim, that's a dumb idea. The, the results say otherwise. You, you, you've certainly <laughs> done well for yourself, Tim. Uh, yeah. he, he did end up deciding on Kylo, and he had a, a fair thought. His fear was that uh, Midnight has, um, has Fanatical. He didn't want to chip that one shield off and just give Midnight a mod. It's a disappointing result from number three there, whiffed on Midnight. Midnight surviving four shots, no damage. Uh, and then number two taking an unmodded shot at range three of backdraft cleanly evaded. I don't think Poppenhausen could have wished for anything no. better there. That that was a very good turn for him. Poppenhausen happy as a clam. Dater expressing a little <laughs> bit of frustration on the table. Would have liked to have skimmed a shield if not. I don't think Dater does frustration. Dater's a very calm guy. So not that Rebel players are predictive, but after Aaron D. Dater pops Leia, what's he going to do? <laughs> Let me guess. Four Ks. <laughs> Four Ks. Come on. Although, you know what? He may be in an awkward position. Uh, one's 4K might be blocked by Midnight. It's a little hard to see. Uh, same for three. Zeb's three turn left clears the middle finger? Yes. Yes, I do. I think so as well. Yeah. I mean, if Dater ever wanted to use Leia, pop a turns on everybody, and then blast backdraft, now is his turn. Yeah, it just depends if, if 3 and 1 have those 4Ks or not. I, I don't think 3 does, and I'm not sure about 4. I think 3 has the 4K. I think 1 unquestionably is blocked. 3 looks like a 4K could fit. Uh, 3 was just range 3, so you're right. Uh, if it was range 3 to midnight, it must have been. Yeah. So what are we going to call the one true Aaron that makes it out of this? we got to come up with some sort of title or or award for the one true Aaron. I, I thought they were just the one true Aaron. It's I just thought the that one was, true Aaron. Yeah. It's, it's a lot riding on this game. There is. There's a lot of bragging rights, mm -hmm. a lot of chirping. Yeah. And Devin standing by in the room ready to <laughs> chirp. I'm just kidding. <laughs> PTL people don't chirp on the PTL people. Come on. We're too busy chirping the GRX. Speaking of which, had a great tournament this weekend. So GRX uh, hosted a, a really fun team tournament. First one we've had in Ontario. Had uh, sold out within within weeks. Three days. Yeah, three days. There three you days go. Three days the tickets were gone. Um, so we had 12 teams come out, and I'm sure there were more that, that would have come out if they could. They kept it kept it kind of Ontario casual. So uh, um, not, not top medalists, but a lot of really fun, interesting things. And now, when you say team tournaments, Evan, what do you mean exactly? Yeah, so it's teams of four, four players per team, uh, and every player has to play a different faction. Um, and 
the one rule they had in there to kind of keep things a little more, more interesting was that you couldn't have any upgrade repeated in multiple lists. So, I mean, for example, proton torpedoes, you could have two in one list, but you couldn't have it in another list once it was in one. I know uh, I came across the person that had two proton torpedoes in their list. <laughs> they also had I-5s and I-6s, just like I, except they had the bid, so their proton torpedoes were very painful. Uh, that was one of the Salt Squadron boys. We had squads from, as Evan said, all over Ontario. We had the GRX hosting, PTL, the 519th Squadron. Uh, we had the Black Fly Squadron down from the Muskokas, Salt Squadron from Niagara. We had a couple of the Durham Dagobah Dogs come out. And even some of the Ewoks from uh, from London made it out. So um, if I'm missing anybody who did attend, apologies. We all had a blast, a blasty blast. It was a very well-organized tournament. Yeah, great. Um, one of the PTL teams made it out on top at the end of the weekend, which were the Knights of Fung. That is the hare himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Alan Fung, flying alongside his compatriots, Mr. Evan Cameron, who joins me on the stream table this evening. Um, also on their team, they had the uh, the very windy Hurricane Jurame Christian, who was on his their team as well. And lastly was Aaron Poppenhausen, who's playing on stream tonight. So um, that was a great showing from PTL. The other PTL team, Ontario's finest, was only dragged into the bronze position because of myself and how shitty I became about uh, three hours into the tournament. Um, I don't blame myself, though I blame beer. And then the second-ranked team was the Salt Squadron. No, it was the... Yeah, it was one of the Salt Squadron Yeah, it was the, the, the real Salt Squadron. The real Squadron, yeah. not the dirty casuals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, the real Salt Squadron dudes. Yeah, yeah. It was a good event, yeah. Um, we look forward to more clubs across Ontario trying these fun alt-format uh, alt tournaments. And, of course, uh, looking forward to all of them uh, showing their colors at the uh, the various FFG Premier level uh, season two uh, events to be starting in late July. This new location, by the way, folks, if you haven't made it out to the new face-to-face -face location and uh, on Danforth, just west of Coxwell, That's right, yeah. is out of this world. They have the most immaculate wooden uh, card tables to it fit an X-Wing mat or play a game of Magic or just to stare lovingly at your friends across the table from each other. It certainly does not look like a game store. It's, it's very nice up there. No, it's got more of a cafe yeah. feel to it, which is really nice. And, they, of course, they brought the cafe over, so there's snacks and coffees and whatnot. We've discussed uh, what, Dater, what Dater's options are, and that is Leia. Uh, what are we thinking for Papenhausen? Papa P's in a big trouble here, i got to yeah. tell you. I don't like any of his options. I, yeah. I don't see many places where Kylo's going where he doesn't yeah. get blocked. This, yeah, this is why I really last turn would have liked to see Kylo do a bank in this way. Get the range one. And then it gives him a you clear five straight out or a th uh, two bank out. Yeah, I got to tell you, though, that five blue straight, it's not as unpredictable as, as <laughs> the Kyle players think it is. It's like, oh, you're here? Yeah. You're probably going to do a five straight, so I'm just going to put number two here and block you. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Dater has announced that he is popping Leia. What? Wait, what? Yeah, shocking, I know. We didn't predict Come it. Come on. Leia Organa, who started 2.0, costed at eight points. Yes, sir. Reduced to only two. Two points. So it looks like Aaron agreed, or Data agreed, that uh, the 4K probably didn't fit, so he's going with the Talon. Uh. According to our faithful uh, followers on the interweb, Leia has been present in 80% of competitive Rebel lists. I haven't seen the number, but I would it's believe it. something up there like that. Yeah. I mean, when you consider the fact that she can get on that little attack shuttle or a Shethapede or, or whatever have you, it's, uh, it's definitely value. Now, I'm not going to speculate what Leia would be recosted at later this summer when the points do come out. Only FFG knows that <laughs> stuff. It's a good upgrade. I, I wonder if it would see play back at the 8 now it cost, you know, now, now that we know what we know. but You see, I, I don't think enough people took it when it was 8 points, yeah. and now that you've taken it at 2 points, you're like, I, I just need to find 6 points so I can <laughs> yeah. 4K turns in a yeah, turn. Yeah. Right? Also, when it was 8 points, there was things like Redline and, and Whisper that were just turned up. So. It's true, and, and a white K turn wasn't very helpful yeah. against stuff like that. When you more what you needed was a way to shred target locks or what have you. So I am wondering, if, if uh, Kylo does go for the 2-turn uh, this way, he might actually find himself in a very good place. Just able to boost out and dodge all the arcs, depending what 3 is dialed in. Yeah, if he two turns left, he's already dodged two arcs. Four's coming in hot. So this one's a Talon, interesting. Is it a Talon as well? Yeah. My goodness. He's very committed on, on Kylo and or Midnight going right. 
Now, I wonder if Dater's going to barrel roll uh, four into mm. the fray. Yeah, I wouldn't either. You're cutting off yeah. Midnight's escape. Are you, though? No, because if Midnight just one turns left into number four, Midnight's golden. You're not getting shot at mm -hmm. at all. Well, yeah. maybe not at all. Number three is... So this one will take him, but... Is my imagination, or is Aaron building a little... Uh, <laughs> Some kind a little... of box for killing. We're three... going to see which of Aaron Poppenhausen's ships land up in that little fun zone. Three has uh, has done a one straight, just barely cleared, so it gets in action. He is getting a focus. Okay. Number two, one forward. Possibly the rebel faction's most useful mm -hmm. tool. How many other ships have a one forward? Like, all of them. There's a lot. There's a lot of yeah. them. I guess the A-Wing doesn't, but yeah. Okay, backdraft coming in hot. Interesting. If yeah. Poppenhausen barrel rolls down board, he could rotate his arc backwards and do the, the dream forward and back shots on two and three. That is true, but depends. If he, if he uh, is bailing with the other two, that's just giving two a shot. Oh. oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, yeah. Even if one hadn't been there, that would have been a bump. Uh, Aaron's just saying he, uh, or Data, or Poppenhausen is saying that he forgot the order and was forgetting that midnight was still going to be there. You know, I almost did that upstairs as too. It's it's true because you're used to Kylo being an ace, and you're like, it's funny because in most of the lists where Kylo, Kylo's so bloody expensive, he's like the center part of your list, and everybody else you're bringing is just like a complimentary wingman or something yep. like that. But in most cases, the complimentary wingmen outrank Kylo with <laughs> pilot initiatives. So here's a perfect example of that nonsense. Okay, so we've got Aaron P and D doing their thinger majiggies. Poppenhausen going to have to rely on Kylo's hatred for X wings and Kylo's force abilities. Now that being said. Kylo's still only taking two shots this turn. Maybe three if yeah. two's there, but why wouldn't two shoot it back? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, it depends if they have arc, but but assume that is arc. I think you're right. Yeah. Midnight's gonna or hop over everybody here. Clear Zeb's arc. Yeah. In the end, this doesn't actually turn out too badly for Poppenhausen. I, I now seeing what we see, I think you're right that backdraft should have rolled. Um. I don't think that Zeb has arc on midnight where they are which would be a shame because then their correct move would be to shoot midnight where midnight is midnight has two range two arcs on her from one and four and a range one from number two so you could theoretically just erase midnight here which would be ideal but you know what at the end of the day Vade, I would prefer to see a focus there. There's enough shots that uh, he's rolling enough dice, he will get a focus result. Poppenhausen going to activate Kylo Ren first out of order. Looks like he's got a range one to Zeb. Victor, can you remind them that Kylo's I-5, not I-6? Well, Midnight doesn't have a shot, so it'll be the... Oh, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Midnight doesn't have a shot. That's fine. That's and back a lot of, a lot of eyes. I-5 or 4? Four? 4. I-4, four, that's right, of course. Uh, okay, Kylo's spending a force for four hits here. No, no, it's two focuses. He was uh, two focuses. Oh. Yeah. So hit, hit, crit. No, just just two. It just was two. he'd rolled three focuses and Ooh, he spent one force. Yeah, it was a tough wild. position. Uh, that was on Zeb. That was on Zeb. Yeah. Zeb uh, that's damage, correct. Yeah. yeah. That looks like good results there. Backdraft getting four results. X-wing two. Considering spending a focus, that's a pretty crummy reason to spend a focus here. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I would not spend that focus no. if it was me. It's, assume there's no crits there. Uh, I don't see a crit. No. Yeah, you know what? This looks like a crit. Well, one crit's fine. One is going through regardless of what he does. So, yeah, I'd hold that trying to take midnight off the board. Yep. So he decides it, to hold it. And the crit is damaged sensor array. I could tell you what that crit does, but as a reminder to all of our viewers. VWTV Live sports one of the best X-Wing overlays on the planet, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to throw up damage sensor array for us right now. Remind us what that crit is. Darren should... Yeah, I was going to say, Darren. <laughs> roll the attack dice there, buddy. Other color. I know we got got lots of dice with lots of colors now. Okay, three results. That's number three shooting at Kylo. Spins a force, takes a damage, gets a force back. One damage off of Kylo there. How old you become? 
Which is ironic, because Pappenhausen is really <laughs> old, but it's okay. Hit double crit. That is too many dice, sir. Backdraft. Taking two shields on backdraft. Midnight. Yeah, I oh, think there was some confusion Sorry. there. Yeah, there should be an extra dice. Okay, so midnight is definitely not rolled enough dice. Yeah, so that was the same as the first result, which is fine. Yeah, they're going to go back to the original roll because he had rolled three dice the first agreed, time. Agreed, 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 yeah. agreed, yeah. So he ends up with, uh, I think it was uh, evade focus blank instead of... Yes, evade focus blank. He took, it looks like two. Yeah. And he forgot to spend his evade too. Okay, so Poppenhausen and Date are just discussing the order of operations here, folks. Uh, it's been agreed that Poppenhausen missed the opportunity to spend his evade token, so they're going to move on. Midnight still has the evade token for the final shot coming. Oh, no. No, it was... We counted it wrong. The hit crit killed him. Yeah, the hit crit killed him. Okay. Such is the way. Okay, so we've got f a range one coming. Spending focused... That is a cock die. Ah, natty of AIDS. Triple natties. Can't complain with that. One shield off a of Kylo. Poppenhausen's Kylo living on. Red number two taking a range one on backdraft out the behind. Okay, so oh. we got hit and hit and crit. All right, backdraft losing two shields there. So all in all, not a great turn for Aaron Poppenhausen. Yeah, no, I'm not, um, I'm not I didn't that. see many ways that Midnight was going to make it out of that turn. No, but he would have definitely liked to have absorbed a shot or two more. For him to die to the, just the two shots is, is painful. Yeah, because everybody had shot. So the only option would have been for number two to either take a shot into backdraft there, as he did, or finish off Midnight. Yeah. So the best case scenario would have been backdraft not losing the two shields yep. there. Yep. Right. Everything else was pretty much in yep. the cards as well. Yeah. Okay. Now, you watched it, and I casted it. Uh, we saw Poppenhausen fly his Kylo all over a map for the better part of an hour and a half last season um, when it came to the top cut matches against Mr. Kelvin Lau. So I don't know what Kylo's going to be able to do here. Yeah, Ky Kylo can do it. And I, you know, he, uh, uh, Dater is not in the best position right now, but he's not in a terrible position. So I know the question I wanted to ask you, Evan. If you had to say the biggest difference between playing an ace player on Vassal and playing an ace player in real life on a table, walk us through some of the pros and cons of the differences. Because you are in the inner leagues of Vassal. You're one of the top-ranked Vassal players in the world. Um, definitely one of the top-ranked in Canada. So help us talk about... Um, your experiences there and what digital X-Wing versus real life X-Wing offers. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm, I'm a big fan of Vassal as a, as a parent, you know, I can't always get out and play. So Vassal is a nice way to be able to get some games in. Um, and, you know, for the most part, it feels the same, but there's certainly some places that, that really do change. Um, you know, judging, judging distances obviously is, is tough on Vassal, um, you know, and, and playing in the Vassal league, uh, instead of using a time limit, we're using a, a 19 round limit. Um, and really, in most games, 19 rounds is a lot longer than, than they typically go. Uh, so as an ace player, if you're thinking, okay, I just got to kill this and then run for time, running for time on Vassal can feel very, very long. It can feel like days. Yeah. Yep. I've, I've had a game go yep. to 19 rounds yep. before. It was like a three and a half hour match. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Yep. My wife comes out, it's like two in the morning. She's yep. like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, guaranteed, if you ever start a Vassal game at 10 p.m., it's going to be three hours and you'll be playing till 1.30. Um, but... Uh, no, certainly, you know, there, there can be differences like that. Um, I still... What about the poker aspect of it? Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but when I play a human across the table for me, I'm watching the heck out of that person. I'm looking for their inflections. I'm looking for, you know, their reactions when they place dice down, what they're looking at. Like, I'm trying to read everything. I'm in, I'm in marketing and sales, so that, that, that comes a little bit naturally to me. What about you? Yeah, I, I think I'm less of a reader. I mean, obviously, you know, you can take cues from where they try to look, you know, what, what lines are they focusing on? What rocks are they getting really close to and seeing where there's space? Um, but, you know, you can also fall into traps doing that um, because they might have looked at that for a long time and decided they weren't going to do that. Um, so, so, I mean, I guess for me, that's, that's a bit less of an impact. 
but certainly, I you know if, if you're if you're really good at reading people, you do lose that in Vassal. I think there's also honestly something I find with Vassal is I sometimes lose focus. My opponents send, taking a long time t uh, setting his dials. I'm just on the internet browsing as opposed to rethinking <laughs> you get 16 and making windows yeah, though, and you're yeah. like, this guy's taking forever. Yeah. I'm just gonna go check Facebook. Yeah, and you know, we're we're playing in person. You're kind of forced to stay focused yeah, on the game. That's true. And, yeah. You sit down in your chair and you just stare at the guy. Yeah. Like, come on. Well, it's different too. Like when you're in live and you actually have a clock going. If there was no clock, I would sit there and I'd you know chirp the guy for however <laughs> long it took until he made his move. But no, at the end of the day, it's like there's definitely pros and cons to both formats. I've had it where I play Vassal for you know a month or so because I'm a parent as well, so it's not always easy to get out sometimes, especially if there's summer vacations and things like your daycare providers on vacation or whatever. Um, but then you get back to the tabletop. And you're like, I've played the last five games on, on Vassal. And you're like, oh, damn it. How far does a two-band go again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, distant judgment. Yes, I, I end up on very a lot of Vassal rocks. A lot of that. You end up, so here's my question. Do you end up, when you make the transition, when you go from one to the other, do you end up hitting more rocks coming back on the tabletop or going back to the digital? Uh, you know, my tabletop judgment stays okay. Uh, my Vassal judgment goes to shit as soon as oh, I, no. uh, I miss a game. But... Yeah, you're not too shabby yourself with the, the Vassal League. Are you still playing? You you stopped uh, lately. I honestly I just play casual now. Yeah. Uh, if I'm if I'm playing like whatever, I'll get on. I'll make some fake name and and, and go on into a room, uh, unless I'm purposely there to like find somebody I know. Then I'll I'll have my my call sign, which is Timbo Slice, uh, on Vassal. And uh, yeah, I mean if if. Either if anybody out there in the Twitter sphere is ever in a situation where they're looking for uh, some competitive games or even some practice, feel free to message any of the Prototype Toronto League guys where we have a Facebook group, um, we have a Discord channel, and there's lots of us that play live. Tuesday nights, tonight is our league night. We've got about a half a dozen players that I've seen just come down and poke their heads in who are upstairs playing. Uh, I was really happy to see James Ling out again yes. today. I haven't seen him in a dog's age. Uh, he's one of the Brit British expats that came to Toronto and just like, well, shit, your country's <laughs> awesome. I can't leave. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just been great. So Dater here splitting up the formation in a big way. Yeah, some big 4Ks. And this one I'm rolling to get a block or staying there for a block. I Might guess. be this barrel rolling back down board to try and block Kylo. Yeah. No, I'm just focusing. Yeah. I guess he, blo he blocks the two turn there. I guess or the two bank to the right. Um, I don't. I don't love it to be honest. But uh, I don't love it either. I think Kylo can bug out down towards where three yeah. is going. I think Dater's trying to put number four in a position to be able to come out against some of the other ships the following turn. Yeah, see, personally, I would have moved two first mm -hmm. and had the focus for two, uh, just in case I kept Ark on Kylo. Yeah, yeah. And then one would not have been as turned. Uh, he would have impacted one, which means he probably would have been facing like that way. And yeah, been able no, to I clear agree. The middle I think finger that would have been the following turn. Sorry, Victor, did I steal your mouse there? There you go, man. Okay, backdraft going to focus and white link for a rotate because the FOs get four white linked actions. That's totally fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. I do like I do like backdraft's position there. He's got the uh, range two on the badly damaged X wing, so that's exactly what he wants to do, try and actually get ships off the board. He does, Unless... yeah. I also like the fact that backdraft can just turn in the following turn and just nuke number four if he needs to. It does does the four K on Kylo? Decides to stick in the fight. Okay, so Kylo has no pattern analyzer, nope. so he's just pulled a proper K-turn. He's got full force, no shields, and he's in four arcs. That's not the best place for Kylo to be here. Zeb is damaged, two health left, long bomb, though. Yeah, he's going to go for number one. Number one, yeah. one is damaged, it makes sense. Number one has the damage sensor. No, that's, that's two. That's yeah. two. Spending force for hit crit. Aaron's regionals dice not proving to be as well earned as it Oof. as he needed them to be. One taking no damage by spending that focus token. Range two from backdraft in this. Now backdraft's an add or a mod. Add, yeah. He's an add a result. Or a, a dice, not a result. But he gets the three, so that's that's what he needed. That gets him. That's that's what he needed. Yeah. Two's off the board. Okay. Well, that's one less arc. So now Kylo just has to worry about three unmodded shots instead of 
three unmodded shots and a modded shot. Mm -hmm. So all in all, not terrible. Yeah, number four is activating first. No shot there. Dater going to have to pick which order he wants to go into. Zeb going to do his first shot. Now, Kylo only has one force, but he does have hate. Two go through, and we got hot Kylo at half health here. Ooh. Crit's going through crit. on Kylo. Ooh, that's not a great crit to get. Not at this Fortunately, point. it looks like there is a leak in Kylo's fuel tank after that one, folks. Recharges two force. Or sorry, recharged a force, now has two force. Oh, another crit, which will trigger fuel leak too. Yeah. Oh. Loose stabilizer. Loose stabilizers that can't go straight one. Has right? to go straight. Has to go straight yeah. one. And he's at one hull, so he has to go straight. And did we get the bonus damage from Fuel League on yeah. that one? We did. Okay, yeah, we did. Yeah. in the range one. Oh. Okay, Poppenhausen, if uh, accepting his yeah. inevitable defeat here, going to concede with Kylo Ren's death there. Backdraft not going to be able to face up against that. Congratulations to our finalist, our semi-finalist, I should yeah. say, the one true Aaron, the one Aaron Dater. Evan, yep. thank you so much for joining us on stream tonight, mate. Any final thoughts for the viewers? Ah, oh, great game. Tough one for Aaron. I mean, you know, he put himself in positions where he was taking shots, and uh, or sorry, it's a tough one for Pappenhausen. He put himself in positions where he was taking shots. They were unmodded, and they put damage in. I think we have to refer to him as Pappenhausen from now on because he can't be Aaron. He's not the one. No, he's not. Anymore. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks, folks. We're gonna sign off.